human being is worth listening to a story. Who you are here in high school, but that's not, it's not who you are, right? You'll find yourself there. Failure's okay and everybody does that and nobody actually really cares you fail as long as you kind of keep going. How you respond to adversity marks your character is what I like to say. And, and in college you're given plenty of opportunity to respond. I could have done it without college, there's no way. Not everybody knows that they can do it if they just do a little bit more. I've certainly never known anybody that has come back and said, I wish I would have messed around more. I wish I would have goofed off more. Just because something horrible happens or something that seems like, oh, that's what I wanted to do and I can't do it, that doesn't mean you can't. It means you have to take that experience and make positive out of it. My name is Brianna North. I am an English teacher who teaches uh, ninth grade and 11th grade, and I also teach the freshman focus class, which I love. Nice. Yeah. What motivated you to become an educator? My family doesn't have teachers in them, but my mom has always been fascinated with education, and she homeschooled me for a lot of my education. Um, but, so that is my background, and then when I was in high school, I got to volunteer with some elementary schools, mm. and that was just like so cool to have like these kids who were kind of listening and also just getting my energy, because I'm, like, I'm an energetic and enthusiastic kind of person, and they just like totally bounced back with that. It was like a mirror, and I'm like, I don't, I don't get that with adults. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Um, and then also, I was really involved in high school. Um, I was like president of the NHS. I was the videographer for social, you know, uh, student council, and I created a, a whole magazine with my creative writing and I, all this stuff. It was really interesting wow. to me, wow. and I was like, so I was really passionate about the idea of getting like of, of like recruiting more people in mm -hmm, and like mm -hmm. trying to get people's passions out. And I was like, I feel like high school is a really good place to do that. And I kind of got a little bit of a power bug in high school. I was like, I want to keep doing this. I don't want to leave high school. I love yeah. high school. <laughs> and so I was like, maybe I'll do high school teaching or something. Yeah. And I had a really good English teacher who I had for three years in a row who fed into that so much. He was like, I would, I would get him talking about like education and pedagogy and that students need to take risks and all of this cool stuff. And he would just like go for like 20 minutes past class because it was online school. So you had that. Uh, amount of time oh, yeah. after class mm -hmm. to just be like blah 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 blah. Anyway, it was really fun and I I've kind of just wanted to do this ever since high school. Maybe so maybe sophomore year is when it started, oh, you know. Wow. So wow. can you describe your college experience? What major did you pursue and why? Yeah, I started um, because I knew that I wanted to be a teacher. Every time I went and talked to the advisors, I was always like, what do I do to get there? Um, I started college classes when I was a senior year. I went to Lynn Benton, obviously there and in high school, but then also through my AAOT, which is what you call it when you get a degree that then you can move on to OSU from, and it's cheaper, and <laughs> also um, and also it, the class sizes are smaller. Like literally, the amount of like talking to other students that I was able to do in Lynn Benton was so much better than OSU because <laughs> OSU was big and scary. Um, but I loved OSU and the upper upper division stuff too. So I got I went to LBCC and then OSU and it took me about six years total. How did college shape your career path? I could have done it without college. There's no way. <laughs> uh, the the teachers there are so like there's so many. If I want to be a teacher, I'm gonna to have to have other teachers. But like they just they have so much more experience. I cannot express how cool it is to be with scholars who just mm. study English all the time. And like I was talking to my students today about I have a, I had a professor who of of Shakespeare who all she did was study medieval things. She could speak old English. She had like she understood why Shakespeare rhymed love with prove. Mm. Like I didn't understand that stuff. And you just it just makes you feel smart. It's a different environment. You're with people who want to be there, learning and trying to make their brains work hard. Mm -hmm. And I just I think I never want to leave a space of learning. But yeah, that's what that's what college did for me. It helped me um, kind of. It just helped me elevate, I guess, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you face any challenges during your college years? And if so, how did you overcome them? Mm. I had a conflict with the only Shakespeare teacher there was at LBCC. And mm -hmm. it was not something that was about him, I don't think, because all of my like English friends, English, English major friends, loved him so much. And he's probably right. But I... Um, I had, I wound up, I, I never did this. I had to withdraw from his class because I just was staying up all night trying to figure out how to work with this guy and I just couldn't figure it out. And I thought that that would be okay because people withdraw from classes, but then he went on a sabbatical the next year and I couldn't get Shakespeare anywhere. Oh, I wound no. up the Shakespeare tech teacher I was just telling you about, she was, she's at OSU. I had oh. to like pay like three times as much to take um, that. So I guess, I guess the way that I overcame it, um, 
was I, I just I just kind of had to pay more honestly and I had to um, it was just sort of a consequence it wasn't bad I don't think um, mm-hmm. but ultimately I think that it worked out in my favor because I got to see someone like taught Shakespeare in a way that I understood and um, I am glad that I didn't stick with that because I think I would have stayed up every night that whole entire term <laughs> and it wouldn't have worked out for me so it's kind of like a pick your battles choose something that works for you yeah. <laughs> kind of situation yeah, yeah exactly yeah. What extracurricular activities or clubs were you involved in during college? I kind of didn't do very much, frankly. I um, was working, not full-time, it was part-time, but I was working hard enough that like I wanted to be able to still think about my work, and if I'm sleep-deprived, I'm not going to be able to think. Um, so I didn't really do very much. I did one little bit of theater. I did like a, a small play and that was at, in, the, in the first year of college and I immediately was like, I don't think I can do this. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of laid low, frankly. Mm-hmm. How did your college professors impact your learning journey? Well, I want to talk about one specific English teacher that I had. Um, he taught me so well in the most like in the most laid back way I've ever, ever imagined. Like I couldn't imagine the fact that he had us all come in and sit in this big circle of desks, which is the perk of going to LBCC because it was a small enough class to do that. But we all sat in like this big circle of desks. Like like English is about discourse. It's about talking and about your, your experience. And if you're not able to talk about your experience with the text, if there's only one person saying, this is what this text means, um, it kind of takes away the heart and soul of reading. And I feel like he kind of he kind of brought that back for me. And it was really cool too, because then I could hear what other people, how other people were experiencing it. And they would bring in more to the text than I would ever hear. Like they'd be like, this is just like when my dad did blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, whoa, like I forgot that that <laughs> happens to people. Like no wonder they wrote about this, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I think it was really cool. Um, and I had another professor who helped me with education. It was so funny. She was teaching me how to be a teacher, but she also was like using all the same like strategies that she was talking about. And so it was like she was telling and showing, oh, and that was really yeah. impressive too. And I still go out and have lunch with her because she's awesome. Oh. Yeah. Share a memorable moment from your college days. Um, I'll talk about the time I was in theater. It was one play, but it was so fun. I got to sit in this trash can and like have a blindfold over my eyes and like have like a hat on and I got me I got got that picture taken of me and it was up in Tequina <laughs> Hall for like oh. six years oh, wow. like I could always be like oh there I am he <laughs> he um <laughs> just me with my my long braids going like this ha huh, I'm dreaming and that was really fun it was a, a friend of mine from elementary school actually who was my director so uh small small world but mm-hmm. it was really cool what skills or knowledge gained in college have been most valuable in your teaching career No professor taught me this, but I could not have gone through college without this. A planner. I never really used a planner in high school, even though they wanted me to. Without a planner, I would have never been able to keep track of all of the assignments and all of the homework because I feel like in in high school, your teachers are trying to tell you again and again. In college, they might tell you one time and that's it. Or they might never tell you, but it was on the syllabus, so you should have known Uh, and then you'd you'd mess it up. So I like keeping a calendar, writing down everything. I got to the point where like I even had like a, I I do this today, I still, I have a a page from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. and I'd block out when I'm sleeping because sleep is important. And then I'd block out when I'm at classes and then all the little free space, Uh, I'd say, this is when I'm spending time with my mom. This is when I'm working on that essay. And it really shows you how much time you really do have in a day because you kind of think like, oh, I have three things I have to do today. There's no way that's all going to work. But you write it down and you're like, you know what? This is really only going to take half an hour. If you did go back to college, what would you do differently? I would love to get involved for real. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't get involved really with anything. Um, I remember walking past this huge, like, thing happening in one of the courtyards where everyone was playing like a little like flute thing Mm. and I was like I didn't know that was a thing I would have done that but Mm. it it, it, it was already happening you know and Mm -hmm. I I don't know I would have reached out maybe more a little bit see what what's going on Mm -hmm. and participated I guess what advice would you give to students considering higher education go to community college first it's way (laughs) cheaper and way better for class sizes Ask for help. Literally, I didn't ask for help from the writing center for the longest time. They have centers for helping you with your writing (laughs) and for helping you with your math. And the first time I went to the writing center with one of my pieces of of writing, they literally sat down and like came up with so many things out of it that I had no idea I'd even put in there. I just, (laughs) I didn't realize I put it in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And they just helped so much. 
And do you have something uh, to say to your students? I just think the skills that you get in college will help you pretty much anything you choose. It's way more personalized to your needs and your experience than anything you've had so far, you know? And I think that it's like you're, you're, you're just sharpening your skills. Mm -hmm. And if, if, you, if you want to be able to do your job well, I think that sharpening your skills in college is, it's a great thing to do. Honestly, no matter what you're doing, yeah. Mm -hmm.